All right, thanks for hanging out with us this morning. Let's check in with Alita Loresca talking about some fog we were dealing with this morning, but nothing like yesterday, Alita. That is right. The widespread clouds that we were dealing with yesterday is now far behind us. We are still seeing some patchy, dense fog this morning, but then sunshine will move in behind our next cool front. Dense fog advisories for some of our northwest counties until 10 o'clock this morning, and you can see clearly that the visibility is no longer impacting us here in the Houston area. Fort Bend County, maximum visibility. Still a couple of areas that we're monitoring from Brenham up toward College Station, less than a mile there, and also the northern parts of Liberty County and sections of San Jacinto and Polk County. What we're seeing on future track is maybe a stray shower or two that may move into the area as a frontal system moves through. It's not going to be a, a, a strong cold front, but it is going to be enough to help blow out the clouds and also bring back the sunshine, increasing the wind speeds as well. Temperature readings today will go from the 50s to the mid 60s. Now the weekend is looking pretty nice, guys. So we'll talk about that and also give you a look at your Texans forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Alita, thanks. Due this morning, a Harris County deputy is in the hospital. The sheriff says a suspected drunk driver is to blame. The sheriff's office says that driver rear-ended the deputy's patrol car, pushed it into the intersection of 1960 and Veterans Memorial, where the patrol car was hit by a second car. The sheriff says the deputy will be okay. The woman who caused the crash is in custody. All right, let's head out to Courtney Fisher now, giving us a preview of the next A.J. Armstrong trial. Courtney. Yeah, good morning, guys. We are live downtown this morning. A.J. Armstrong is back in court. It's three days before his retrial for capital murder begins. We have followed this story for three and a half years. You may remember that A.J.'s parents, Dawn and Antonio Sr., were shot, killed in their own home in southeast, southwest Houston. He is six, he was 16 when it happened. He's now 20 years old. Today, though, let's talk about that. A judge will decide whether or not thousands of text messages between AJ and his parents will be seen in trial by a jury. They were evidence. They were seen in April. That ended in a mistrial. Prosecutors say those texts show that AJ was lying to his parents before the murders. The defense, though, arguing the text should be thrown out because AJ's cell phone was lost during the last trial after all that data was extracted. We'll let you know what the judge decides today. By the way, coming up on Monday at ABC 13 at 10 o'clock, I have an exclusive interview with AJ Armstrong. You don't want to miss it. We'll see what he has to say and what he's been doing for the past nine months since the last mistrial. For now, reporting live downtown, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. An Ulta Beauty in New Jersey is receiving backlash after a Houston woman claims an employee told her that her skin was too dark for most of the colors in the store. Ebony London scheduled to get her makeup done for her baby shower. She consulted with the artist before and showed a picture of what she wanted to look like. The artist said she couldn't do it or could do it. London says afterwards she looked at what her makeup looked like and she just wasn't pleased with her look. This is when the artist told her she did everything she could and London was just too dark for most of the colors in the store. I really would like for Ulta to really consider um, their service line and how they train their um, makeup artists. Now, Ulta said in a statement, guest satisfaction is their top priority and is taking action to make changes for a great store experience. All right, well, roll up your sleeves. Crawfish season is about to begin. I can't really get these up, but you get the point. <laughs> Good effort. The popular spot, Crawfish Shack, opens today in Crosby. Yum. It is only drive through though, for now. Stop it, Steven. Sorry. It will be open from 3 to 9 p.m. You obviously just have not had it's the best video. It's that video. I can't. Ugh. Customers can start dining in on Wednesday, February 5th. In an added note, the restaurant is reminding customers they will not sell the sacks of live crawfish at this mm -hmm. time. They are boiling everything that they can get. That video. Wow. Delicious. Can't handle it. Well, now to the Texans. The best NFL team in Texas, I keep getting to say that, is getting ready to take on the Buffalo Bills. Your Houston Texans begin their playoff run tomorrow at NRG. Yeah, you'll see the game right here on ABC 13. But first, we want to see how the team is getting ready. Reporter Jeff Ealing is at NRG. Hey, they've been putting in a lot of work on the practice field starting on Monday and working all the way through Thursday. A lot of things that they do to get ready for the game. We ask them specifically, what do you like to do to get ready for game day? 
The Texans got in one last full practice Thursday before taking on the Buffalo Bills this weekend. When it comes to getting ready for game day, the linebackers get a little practice catching passes, and they better catch them all. Kush uh, fires off some balls at us. we got to catch it. If you don't catch it, then you, you're ashamed. You have to do the walk of shame. I usually win. I, I, I'm usually good with it. I mean, you got somebody right over there. Number 50, Tyrell, he's terrible. He's trash at it. As game time approaches, Zach Cunningham tells us he likes to get in the zone with the help of a little music. Well, I got a, I got a playlist that I, uh, I listen to. It's, it's a set, set few uh, songs that I have. Do that. Got some stretches and stuff that I do before every game. And you know that it's going to be loud inside NRG. If you're lucky enough to come down here, don't just come. Bring a foam finger, and every time they score, annoy the guy next to you by saying, Texas, let's go. Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas. You know what I mean? Right. Like, everybody TV. was not awake and pumped for this game. They certainly are now. Thank yes, you. nobody gets they you pumped like Jeff Ewing. Nobody. Wee, let's go. Okay, well, today it has been a foggy start to our day, but I know we are seeing a little bit of sunshine peek through for those Saturday sports games. Alita Laresca here with an update. Yeah, thankfully a cold front is on the way and that's going to help blow out the clouds as we get into the afternoon, setting the stage for an absolutely gorgeous weekend, the first weekend of 2020. Today, look for low clouds and fog to clear out on the northwest side of town. Sunshine this afternoon. The winds will be picking up out of the northwest 15 to 25 miles per hour. Notice we've built in a slight chance for a stray shower at least through 9 a.m. and then most of the cloud cover and any chances for rain will be diminishing. Look out for those winds, double digit winds. 15 to 25 miles per hour and then slowly starting to back off as we get into the overnight hours. We will warm into the 60s this afternoon. Those overnight lows dropping down into the 30s and 40s. Chilly start in Huntsville, 39 degrees, 42 here in Houston. But yes, loads of sunshine just in time for that playoff game. Texans versus the Bills tailgating. Temperatures are going to warm into the upper 50s, mid 60s by kickoff time. And then for that drive home and that Texans win, temperatures dip down once again into the 50s. May want to keep a light jacket with you. And then sunshine this weekend will eventually give way to a few clouds on Monday. I think our next best chance for some rain about a week from now, a 30% chance right now, along with a few scattered thunderstorms. Catherine. Uh, a perfect weekend for some playoff football. You can go to abc13.com for some of my tips on how to get to NRG quickly, safely, and on the cheap if you are lucky enough to be going to the game. Let's check out traffic. Now, if we head into the weekend, you'll notice there's a closure on the Southwest Freeway ramp on the northbound and southbound lanes of 59 to the West Loop. So you'll see that blocked off overnight on Saturday from 9 p.m. until Sunday at 5 a.m. Use the feeder road as your best alternate route. All right, important tips there, Catherine. Thanks, and thank you guys for hanging out with us this morning. Yeah, we're always updating the ABC 13 mobile app as, long, as well as all of our stories online. In case you missed anything, have a good rest of your day.